So we're here today at uh, Aaron Woods Twin Arenas and I've uh, got a fantastic opportunity to meet with and interview Ryan Strichnowski. I hope I have the name right, uh, certainly have to practice that before we actually talk to him. Uh, he's a survivor of the Humboldt Bron Broncos uh, bus crash here in April of this year and to me it's an incredible privilege to be able to do this. The, the thing I was thinking is I, I do some pretty high pressure things at times like being in front of council where they're asking me questions about budget but I can't think of a time where I've been more nervous about what I'm about to do. Uh, so I just want to leave that thought with all of you and make sure I do the best I can. To, uh, you get changed. It's a, it's a privilege to meet you. Thanks. Absolutely. So the Humboldt uh, Bronco tragedy in April touched everyone and members of, uh, many members of CFD felt a really strong connection as did every city employee I'm sure as well as every person in the city of Calgary uh, as they themselves or their kids have chased that dream of being a pro hockey player and travelled on buses to get to games and uh, so some real strong connections there and like many other Canadians uh, we put hockey sticks outside the fire holes, we wore hockey jerseys and uh, we supported uh, in any way we could of course although in those situations it's tough to know how we support people in those circumstances. Um, and also this year at the Calgary Stampede Parade I actually got to meet uh, some of the responders who came to the Humboldt uh, Bronco uh, bus tragedy I guess is the only way and I know that had a profound impact on them as well that I think we can all understand as first responders. So I'm just delighted to be here today with uh, a survivor of the Humboldt uh, crash, Ryan Stritznitsky. Hope I got that right at the East Calgary Twin Arenas. So thank you so much, Ryan, for joining us on Open Lines and, and talking a little bit about your, your recovery. So I can't tell you how pleased I am to be here today. So maybe it's, uh, it's about eight months since the uh, accident. How's your recovery going? Uh, it's been amazing. I mean, I go to physio uh, five times a week and it's, uh, it's pretty like vigorous, so um, I push myself every day and get stronger, become more, more independent, and get better on the ice. Yeah, you, you've shown incredible courage and resiliency, and I think that's something as first responders we all need, uh, you know, to, to, to do our jobs. Where do you find the strength to persevere through what you've been through, which I think most of us, certainly myself, couldn't even imagine? Um, I, I put myself with the right group of people. I have a motivation in mind. I have goals. Right. Um, so yeah, I just push myself every day and always have you know that motivation of you know my teammates, my past coaches, right. and, and everything like that. So it helps push me forward every day. So I know the Saskatchewan first responders, the firefighters, medics, police were an incredibly important part uh, of the rescue effort after the crash. If you don't mind, could, what do you remember about the accident and uh, and their efforts in particular? Is there anything in particular you remember? I remember a uh, a woman coming to see me as soon as the accident happened and. You know, she took care of me. I made sure she got to my teammates first, but because I was uh, mentally stable at the time. So, I mean, obviously you can't wrap your head around something like that, but I remember her coming to take care of me and uh, it, was, it was great heartwarming feeling, like knowing that someone was there for me, that I wasn't alone. Was the woman a firefighter or a police officer or you don't, don't uh, remember? Just a, just a civilian, I believe. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And that's amazing how often that happens, right? We, we can't do our job without the support of uh, people who pass by or that, so that, that's amazing to hear. Your, your never give up attitude that I really sense strongly and, and your willingness to embrace new challenges has led you down the path now of sledge hockey. Um, you know, how much has it meant to you to be able to get back on the ice? That's amazing. I grew up uh, playing uh, hockey and then uh, I've always wanted to be a part of the game and, and make it somewhere with hockey and be known for that hockey player or sledge right. hockey player. And I think with that goal in mind again and that motivation, I think I can get there. Yeah. Coincidentally, your coach, Chris Cedarstrand, is a trained firefighter and a Canadian national player, uh, sledge hockey uh, player, and I hope I have that right as well, who's also been a mentor to you. Uh, you know, how has that helped you? What has that meant to you? Uh, he was a former junior hockey player in the Western Hockey League, and he went through a tragic accident and lost his leg. And, uh, you know, watching him, what he's achieved in his life, like being above, the first above the knee amputee in, in North America firefighter. So, uh, things like that just motivate me and, and want me to be more like him and follow in his footsteps. Right. Teamwork is something, one of our four values. We have four values, pride, professionalism, teamwork and respect. And I know uh, we hold that tremendously dear within the fire department. Talk about it a little maybe about what teamwork means to you and the special bond that you share with your humble teammates. Uh, teammate is like, is like having a family member, you know, you, if you work together you can get things done and achieve way more. I know for a playoff standpoint, working as a team you can get uh, to the highest point possible and uh, teamwork is so, so important because you build those bonds and friendships that last forever. Right. Well, um, 
I don't have any more questions for you, but I do have a couple of, uh, a couple of gifts for you. So first of all, uh, we have um, a Calgary Fire Department ball cap here with, uh, with your name, and uh -huh. I double checked and triple checked, and apparently we've spelt it correctly, so Perfect. that's for you, and you're, you. you can certainly wear it backwards, uh, with, uh, whichever way you choose. And also, this is a challenge coin, and there, there's a lot of things I could talk to you about challenge coins after the interview because it probably would take too long to explain the whole significance, but I think significantly, really, carrying this with you is, is a good luck uh, charm, if you like. So your choice whether you do that, and, and there's a very special way we, we present these as well, where I hold this in my hand, we shake hands, and you have a challenge coin of the Calgary Fire Department. So Thank you so much. I'm absolutely privileged to have been able to talk to you today. I'm going to walk out of here buzzing with inspiration, I assure you, and uh, I, I suspect many of the people watching this video will feel the same way. So please stay in touch. We'll try and follow your success. And uh, if there's ever any chance for the fire department to intersect with you along this path, please let us know. We'd be happy to do that. And, uh, and, and all the best for where you want to be. And I'm sure we're going to see you in uh, Team Canada uh, one day at the top level of this game, because I just sense you have that determination. Thank you. Really Thank appreciate you. it.